This is a video on the NRAF Nonius Sonopulse 490. It is a therapeutic ultrasound often used by athletic trainers as well as physiotherapists for the treatment of soft tissue injuries. In this video, we'll look at some of the parameters as well as some of the functions of this particular machine, what it can do. Before you, we look at the parameters, the very first thing is to locate the on-off power switch. It's just located on the top right-hand corner of the machine itself and when you switch it on the LED lights on the um, ultrasound transducer will light up. You have to wait for it for about a few seconds before it initializes and when it's ready for you to use there will be an ultrasound symbol located at the top right hand corner of the LCD screen. There are several parameters that you can actually choose from for the ultrasound Sonopulse 490. The very first parameter we'll be interested in is this button over here. If you press this button, the parameter will start to flash on the LCD screen. You can use this big dial to change the parameter. This is the frequency of the ultrasound. For the Sonopulse 490, it offers you 1 MHz as well as 3 MHz pulse settings. If you're choosing to treat a shallower portion of the soft tissue, then the 3 MHz is the appropriate frequency to use. However, you're treating a much deeper tissue, then the 1 MHz will be what you'll be interested in. This is a button for controlling the pulse percentage or pulse duration. For continuous ultrasound, what you do is you, when you push this button over here, you turn the dial to turn it up to 100%. That will give you continuous ultrasound. However, if you want to change that to a slightly lower percentage, simply turn on the dial to lower the percentage. For the Sono Pulse 490, it offers you several pulse duration settings. There is 5%, 10%, 20%, 50%, 80%, and 100%, which is continuous ultrasound. This setting over here controls the amount of minutes that you will be um, setting for the therapeutic treatment time. The therapeutic treatment time depends on the depth of tissue and the, um, the area that you are trying to treat. So you can just simply press on that grey button over here and use the dial to increase the amount of time. Let's say for example, I want to treat the patient for 5 minutes. Once you turn up the time setting, the ultrasound intensity setting will also appear. There are, for the ultrasound intensity setting, there are two units of measurement that you can use. One is the commonly used watt per centimeter squared, and that is recommended or what you use during the treatment because it's much more controllable. However, there is an option for you to change that into just simply watts. But for us, we would want to choose watts per centimeter squared. This dial located right here increases the ultrasound dosage or the ultrasound intensity. You turn it clockwise to increase and you turn it anti-clockwise to decrease the intensity. Usually what you would do is put the ultrasound head with the ultrasound gel on the soft tissues before you turn on the ultrasound intensity. But for the purposes of demonstration, I can simply just turn it on just for you to see. When you do that, the lights will, the LED lights on the ultrasound transducer will turn on to indicate that you are not actually putting the ultrasound transducer head on the on a um, on a patient's skin. These orange buttons over here are programmable settings that you can put. Let's say, for example, there is a there is a setting that you use frequently in the clinic due to the conditions that you see. You can use these orange buttons to program the settings so that you can readily access them. In order to switch off the Sonopulse 490, always remember that the ultrasound dosage should be zero if you have not completed the treatment as yet, and turn everything down so that there's no ultrasound being emitted before you switch off the machine. Once you've done that, simply go up to the top right hand corner again to the power button and switch off the ultrasound.
this is the end of our video. In our next video, we'll look at how we can change the different settings in order to cater to the type of conditions that we use to treat our patients.